will share my screen. You should be able to see it shortly. And for today's session, we are going to begin with a short presentation on the SDOC solution, a little bit about our company and our products. Uh, and then we're going to jump into a demo of the solution. SDOX is a 100% native document generation and e-signature solution for Salesforce. Now you've probably heard a lot about a lot of different document generation and e-signature solutions. So what makes SDOX different? Other solutions are built on external clouds and interforce, interface to Salesforce using APIs, but SDOX is 100% native to the Salesforce platform. We are built on the force.com platform, uh, which results in a few key benefits. The first of which is secure data. When you're using our products, your data is never leaving your own Salesforce system, making it compliant with the most stringent of data residency laws and any compliance restrictions that may be present in your organization. This makes us trusted by healthcare, finance, uh, and multiple industries with very tight data regulations. It also results in faster processing. When you're using our solutions, there's never any external data communication to and from clouds, meaning that we're able to deliver documents lightning fast. Our solution maintains superior performance and reliability because it's completely hosted on your Salesforce instance. There's no reliance on external systems, so if Salesforce is up, so is our product. And if Salesforce is down, you probably have bigger fish to fry than <laughs> document generation being unavailable. And the final benefit is the cost effectiveness. SDOX doesn't have to maintain external servers or pay for API usage, so we're able to bake in those costs uh, in the form of lower licensing fees, pass those savings on to our clients. Uh, we're going to cover multiple use cases today, uh, but SDOX is able to help by automating Salesforce workflows, whether it's generating documents or sending them for e-signature. Uh, there's a variety of ways that SDOX can be used. Some of the most common documents that we see are invoices, quotes, contracts, and emails, but it's really up to your own business requirements and your imagination uh, to determine which documents can be generated by our solution. It's template-based, so uh, you can generate any type of document that pertains to your business workflows. SDOX is trusted by thousands of businesses worldwide, ranging from multinational enterprise-level clients and federal government entities, all the way down to nonprofits and small businesses alike. And the trust of these thousands of clients are what has placed SDOX in the top 1% of all apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. Out of more than 3,600 applications, our hours consistently ranks in the top 20, and really those results speak for themselves. So that takes us through the initial overview of the company. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is jump into Salesforce and provide a demo of our product. To begin with, the first use case that we will cover is generating a document. Uh, to initiate this, I'm going to navigate to an account record in Salesforce, but since we are native to Salesforce, SDOX is compatible with any object that you may have, whether standard or custom. Here on this specific account record, we have some linked contact records, linked opportunity records, and of course some field values, all of which we are going to incorporate into an account summary document. To initiate this, we click the SDOCS button that has been placed on our page. When we click this button, it takes the user to the template library, and this is where they choose the document or documents that need to be generated using that account's data. I will choose a PDF and an email template, uh, but SDOCS allows you to also generate Word documents, Excel, PowerPoint, and a variety of other types of files. Once our templates are selected, we click Next Step, and at this stage, it's going to take the data from our Salesforce record where we began this process and merge it into the templates to prepare our output files. And you'll see that these documents are already generated, uh, just like I mentioned in the introduction, very fast process. Opening up this PDF here, just to talk you through a few components of this sample document and show you some of the capabilities of the data that can be merged into templates. Here in this document, we're starting with a dynamic header that's going to include the account name and the account logo, as well as some information about the document, like when it was prepared, who it was prepared by, and some pagination. 
The account details section starts off with some field values that we've grabbed from our account record and brought directly into the document. Information like shipping address, account number, revenue, and so on. You're able to embed SOQL queries directly into these templates. In this example, we have a couple of them embedded uh, to provide summaries. The first one is on the total number of open opportunities that are linked to our account and then performing a sum on those opportunity values. You'll see at the bottom of this section, we have a couple of images. On the left side, this image lives within Salesforce and ha has been brought directly with into our PDF. On the right side, this image lives on an external repository. And this is to demonstrate that whether you have images inside of Salesforce or outside, SDocs is able to include those directly into any document that you may generate. Now, the next section that we have is a related list, and much like Salesforce related lists, SDOC's related lists are designed to display information about records that are linked to your base record. In this case, we are showing the contacts that are linked to our Burlington Textiles account. Uh, but this functionality is useful for uh, line items on an opportunity, products on a quote, any of those one-to-many data relationships that you may have. Now, in this example, you'll see that we're pulling a few fields from each one of these contact records, information like the name, an image of the contact, a rich text description, and a few others. And the key part about these related lists is that they're going to be dynamic. In this example, we have three related contact records, but you could imagine we might have one, we might have 10, and this table will automatically adjust to pull in those records. Now, the last thing that we have in this sample document is another related list. This one is running on the opportunities that are linked to our account. Um, in this example, we're doing a couple of extra things. Uh, first of all, we are filtering out the opportunity records so that only the open opportunities appear in this list. We're also sorting on this amount column and performing a sum down below. These related lists allow you to filter, group, sort, perform any of those more complex manipulations on the related data that you're merging in. So this concludes our uh, initial sample document. What I'm going to do next is take this PDF that we've created and send it out via email. To initiate that, I'll click this email selected docs button, and this takes us to the SDocs email screen. Now on this screen, you'll see that our PDF is now attached to our outbound email. If we wanted to add additional attachments, whether from Salesforce or our local machine, all we have to do is click this button and choose the additional attachments to be included. Now the body of this email has been automatically prepared and that's because we chose an email template in addition to our PDF. These email templates can merge data, apply formatting, apply conditional logic, do anything that a typical PDF can do. The main difference, of course, is that it's automatically building out an email message. And this is beneficial because the user does not have to come into this email window and manually type it out every time. Now, they could apply some customization if they wanted to personalize this email message, but this gives them a solid starting point. The other benefit of these email templates is that you can pre-populate any field on the email itself. In this example, we took our account owner's address and dropped it into BCC. We also provided a default subject line, again, making it so that the user does not have to type this information in manually each time. Any of these fields can be editable or locked down depending on the flexibility that the user should have to make changes. Once our email is ready to send, we just click this button here and it's going to fire out the email. Now, when you send emails through SDocs, since we're native to Salesforce, they're going to automatically track back to your base record in the activity history list. This is going to show you uh, that an email was sent. It's going to show you who it was sent to, as well as any attachments that were included and feed into your open statistics and deliverability reporting. The other linkage that occurs is that the documents you create will automatically show up on your base record in this SDocs related list. This is going to show you all of the documents that were generated for the specific record that you're viewing. You can always come back here and resend it to the customer via email or just use this for record keeping purposes. 
SDocs also allows you to save the documents to attachments or files within Salesforce, depending on which one your organization uses. So this concludes the initial use case of generating a document from an account record. Uh, and you'll notice that this was a, a fairly involved process because the user had to click a button and make a few decisions after clicking that button. But SDocs allows you to streamline the end user's workflow. Uh, one option that you have is to create a one-click button that when the user clicks it is going to pre-select a template and automatically display the document to the user. Now this would be useful if maybe the user needed to print the document with as few clicks as possible or save it locally. But these one-click buttons can be set up so that it lands the user on the email screen or even back on the record where they initiated the process. Taking this automation one step further, you can completely remove the end user from the equation and make it so that your system generates the documents. Uh, one example that I like to think of is maybe when we have a new account created, we want to send out an account welcome package that contains a few documents. You can set it up using Process Builder or Flows in Salesforce so that those documents are automatically created and routed out appropriately. Okay, so the next use case that I want to show you is going to uh, be an e-signature use case. So not only generating the document using SDocs, but sending it for e-signature using S-Sign. For this use case, I'm going to initiate it from an opportunity record. Uh, again, in this case, we will click this generate document button and choose our templates. I will choose an invoice for signature template and denoted by this S sign logo means that it's available to send via e-signature. And I will also choose an email template to allow us to send it out. S sign allows you to collect signatures in person if you ever are sitting across a desk from someone um, or if you have a field service user who needs to collect a signature on a tablet. But for today's use case, we'll deliver this via email. So now that my templates are selected, I'll click next step. And this is going to generate the document. To send this out for e-signature, we click this button and it takes us back to the familiar SDocs email page. Now we'll review this email prior to sending out. You'll see that it's automatically created the body and automatically filled in a couple of fields. And when I'm ready to send it, I'll just click this send button. Before I open the document up to actually show you what it looks like from the customer perspective, I will just point out that when you generate an e-signature request, it's going to automatically link back to your record in this S signed envelopes related list. This is going to show you the status of each of those signature requests that you've sent out. And this is a reportable object, meaning that you can run a report and see the status of all of your team's e-signature requests, or maybe all of your personal e-signature requests that have been sent out. So the next thing that I will do is open up the email that we just received uh, and show you what it looks like to sign. So here's the email. Uh, what the user does is they click this view and sign button to open the document for e-signature. Now, before they can sign the document, they have to do one of two things. They either have to consent to do business electronically, or if you want things to be more secure, you can send an email verification code to their inbox that is used to verify their identity. But once they've done one of those two actions, they'll click continue, and this takes them to the document that needs to be signed. And again, I'll just point out that this is still within the context of your own Salesforce instance. This is never hosted externally. Uh, everything that we're looking at today is within your own org. And the process that we are viewing is going to look exactly the same whether you're on a desktop like I am or a tablet or a mobile device. Uh, it all looks exactly the same as today. So you'll see here that we created an invoice document. Uh, this is just outlining some uh, information about the invoice, like a few line items, as well as some information about the account record that this opportunity is linked to. Uh, but the important part for this use case is the master service agreement section down below. Okay, uh, it looks like I might be having some screen share issues. Let me 
No, we can okay. see. Yep. Is it back now? Mm -hmm. Okay, where did I lose you? Okay, well, I will just take this one from the top. What we did is we opened up the email and clicked the button to sign the document. Uh, and this is the document that needs to be signed. So it's an invoice that's going to include uh, some opportunity line items, as well as some information about the account that's linked to this opportunity record. Uh, but the important part is the master service agreement page down below. This is where we're asking our customer to not only sign the document, but also add a couple of data points. So the first data point uh, is to enter their title. And this is just a text input. This can be used to collect information like their address, uh, their, any of those types of text inputs that you may need to collect. Uh, the next thing that we're asking them for is to sign the document. And I'll click this blue arrow, which opens the window that allows us to add our signature. Now we can either draw it out if we're on a tablet or a mobile device, this would be the best option. But since I'm working on a laptop, what I'll do is I'll click text to signature so that the signature is automatically built for us. Now all we have to do is click add signature and it's going to be embedded into our document. And the last piece of data that we're asking the user for is the date signed. Now we can pre-populate this field when it submits or we can give the customer the flexibility to choose the date. I'll choose today's date. And one thing that I'll point out before we submit this document is that this is a pretty basic example of an e-signature document because we're only routing it to a single party. S-Sign can be used to send these documents out to two or more parties, depending on how many people need to sign your documents. You can also collect as many inputs as you want to of different varieties, including text, checkbox, initials, date, and signature. So now that we've filled out this document, I will click submit. And at this stage, it's going to take the signed version of our contract and link it back to the record where we created it in Salesforce. It's also going to automatically notify the person who requested the signature that this document has been completed. And I will show you what the signed document looks like now. So we have the uh, inputs that we filled out, entering the title as well as the signature. It adds the name and the date and timestamp of the user who signed this document. And then additionally, it's going to include this S sign audit trail as the last page of the document. This captures all of the important information around the signature request, like when it was created, emailed, submitted, and so on. It's going to capture some data on the signer, like their name, their email address, and their IP address. And it's also going to include a unique hash of the signed document that can be used to verify its legitimacy, should that ever be called into question. All of this is what part of what makes S-Sign a legally binding signature. Now this page can be disabled for your customer facing versions, but it's going to be tracked on your internal copies for compliance reasons. So that concludes our uh, S-Sign use case. The final thing that I'm going to show you is what it looks like to set up the templates that allow you to generate documents and send them out for e-signature. Now, SDocs has a few different methods of creating templates. The one that we're going to look at today is an in-browser visual template builder. Uh, we also allow you to take ex existing Word files and PDFs and upload them to the system directly. Uh, but for today's demo, we will take a look at our in-browser point-and-click editor. Each template that you create in SDocs is just another record in Salesforce, which makes it easy to add to your existing sharing model to control which users can see which templates. It also makes it easy to build out your templates in a sandbox and deploy them up to production, just like you would any other record in Salesforce. Here on our template record, you'll see that you can choose the object that the template is built for in this pick list. All standard and custom objects are supported and you can choose the file type here in this uh, template format pick list. Now to build the actual document, we click template editor and this opens up our visual editor. The first step within our template builder is typically to add any text or content that is not going to change. And that's just a matter of finding where that content needs to go and typing it in you can use this toolbar up above to add formatting and graphical elements. So information like font coloration, alignment, 
You can also insert images, tables, page breaks, and so on. This is very similar to Microsoft Word, uh, so it's a very intuitive process. Uh, the next thing that I'll show you is how you can add dynamic content into your templates. So the first example is, let's say that we want to grab a field from our base record and merge it into our PDF. To do that, we just click insert field and it opens a window that allows us to choose from any of the fields that are available on our base object. If I wanted to embed the contract name, all I have to do is click that field, click insert, and this tag will be added into our document that is going to take the contract records name field and merge it into this location. The insert field window also allows you to explore related objects. If I wanted to pull a field from the account instead of the contract, all I have to do is click that object and it expands it. You can keep traversing your data structure up to five relationships deep using this point and click method, meaning that your users don't have to have uh, SOQL knowledge in order to grab data, even in sophisticated ways. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can take your existing SDocs template and set it up with eSignature. So to do that, we click the Show Assign Options button, and this opens a control panel on the left side of the page. This is where you set up everything related to eSignature. The first step is typically to go to your Signer Profiles tab, and this is where you create one profile for each party that needs to add input to your document. In this example, we'll create a profile named customer. You can give it a dynamic email address using a merge field. So in this case, it's going to pull our contact records email field so that the user doesn't have to manually type it in when they're sending out documents. And the same concept here on the signer name field. If we had multiple signers, we could control the order in which the documents are routed by the signing order field. And once your profiles are created, then you simply go over to the Assign Fields tab and you'll create an input field for each area that your customer needs to add input to the document. So the first example, let's say that we want to collect a signature from our customer. All we have to do is copy this and paste it where the customer needs to sign. Let's say below this services section. You duplicate this process out uh, for each field that needs to be collected. So let's say that we need to collect the initials from our customer. We just select initials and paste this where it needs to go. The last input type that I'll show you is a text input. Uh, there are a couple of additional options when you're collecting text. You can make an input optional or required. You can choose a field to write the data that the customer adds back to a field in Salesforce. Maybe we're asking them for their address and it's going to automatically update the contact records address field with the input that they add. You can also give it a default value, in this case, telling them that they need to fill this in. And again, once you've completed this process, you simply copy and paste where this needs to appear. Uh, and the last thing that I'll speak to is that S-Sign also uh, supports things like expiration dates on your contracts uh, to invalidate a document after a certain number of days. Uh, you can also set up automatic reminders to be sent out to the users, reminding them that their signatures have been requested. And this takes us through everything that I wanted to deliver for today's demo. Now, there's certainly a lot of feature functionality that we didn't have time to get to today. Uh, but if you're interested in discussing how that feature functionality can be used within the context of your own business processes, certainly reach, to, reach out to sales at sdocs.com. And we're happy to schedule a demo and discuss your specific needs. But at this point, we do have a few extra minutes. So I'll go ahead and open it up uh, to questions.